Episode one of the Halo TV series came out this week. And it's strange for me personally, because I've been making fun of this TV series now for nine years. Ever since Steven Spielberg was hyping it up. He was out there, he was out there saying, I, I used to play Pong, this is going to be a great show. And now it's here, it's out. We can all make fun of this TV show now, and I have to say, I don't feel like it. I have to say, it feels like somehow in the year 2022, making fun of a Halo TV show is punching down. I don't know when that happened. So here's my top 10 reasons young Sheldon is a piece of shit. Number one, the premise. <laughs> I've been thinking about since last week's episode about Kirby, the character who never changes, is Kratos, a character who's changed a lot. Because in 2005, Kratos was unlike any character, any hero we had seen up to that point. This guy spat blood, humped topless women, he'd kill a slave to solve a puzzle. He's, he's just rageful, he's just unique, I guess, of the time. And then that quickly wore off. By 2012, when, when God of War Ascension came out, you could tell his shtick was tired. We had Nathan Drake at that point. We don't care about Kratos. What's interesting about Kratos? Are you wondering what Kratos is going to do next? It's killer hump. It's all he's got. And so then in 2018, Kratos is basically a new character. Canonically, same character. Functionally, a new character. Sort of more reflective of modern sensibilities. And that, that almost never works modernizing a character. It's worked five times in the history of video games. We can do that real quick. Kratos from 2018. Sonic Adventure Sonic. Hot Ryu. Donkey Kong Country Donkey Kong. And of course, Crash Bandicoot with tribal tattoos. So I like to think of things as this cultural pendulum, where once we go far into this direction, this becomes popular. We often swing back into some other direction, opposite of that, that then becomes popular. And not necessarily a two-dimensional pendulum, right? That it can go in any direction. So yeah, we had our happy-go-lucky 3D platformer characters. We had our Sly Cooper. And that's why Kratos worked so well. And that's why self-deprecating, funny Nathan Drake worked so well. And then that's why the Sad Dad era worked so well. And then I wonder what we're about to go to next. Where the pendulum is swinging next. And I would like for you to watch this clip. This is from a moment of Elden Ring I was playing recently. It's something that stood out to me. It's a character moment that resonated strongly with me personally. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's not scared but he's not being brave. He's not mad right now. He simply doesn't care about this. And I think that's so interesting. So the theory I'm presenting to you today is that I think that where the pendulum will swing next is into video game characters who are in full degaff mode, dead inside, simply not caring about what's going on. And I realize, yeah, not caring about what's going on has been cool since the birth of teenagers. I'm not, I'm not saying that, right? Because if a, if a character is completely disaffected, if they're completely belly flopped down on a beanbag chair, swiping through TikTok till their bedtime at 11.30, then nothing happens in a video game. I realize that. Uh, to be more specific, I guess characters who are getting their job done while also not caring about what's happening. I know 2019 feels like eight years ago. It was only four. Oh, it was only three. It was only three years ago. I feel like the goose from Untitled Goose Game was really onto something. I feel like that goose really captured the element. I feel like that goose spoke to people and maybe we failed to pick up that baton. So for today's episode, which I realize we're deep into, I just want to do a quick little game, quick little exercise. It's called Modern or Not Modern. I want to look at an upcoming game and assess the modern modernity the modernity of its main characters. Saints Row, not modern. We've got to start with an easy one. Saints Row, the, the franchise probably did need a reboot, but here we're looking at young 
cool, murderous gang members who seem to be putting a lot of effort into trying to look and act hip as they murder. It's as if throughout the process of character design, they forgot what kind of game they're making. It's weird, man. It's like, it's like Fortnite is jovial violence. It's not real violence. It's not like Spider-Man is actually shooting teenage girls with a gun. That's not actually happening. And so is, is Saints Row, Saints Row, are you like, are you in a Fortnite world or what? Stray, modern. Here we have a cat wearing a backpack who clearly doesn't give a shit. A plus. Bayonetta 3, modern. It's kind of crazy. I, I wonder if Bayonetta, acting sassy all the time, doing stupid poses, while she is slaughtering hundreds of angels, I wonder if that plays better today than it did even 14 years ago, which is when Bayonetta 1 came out, which is already crazy. But I wonder, I mean, I wonder if that works today. And I, and I really, I hope that's all there is this time. I feel like Bayonetta the character is strongest when she isn't concerned about some other weaker character's well-being. Just let her do her thing. I think 10 hours of sexy, sassy Bayonetta could work. I think it's a functional story. Redfall, not modern. And clearly, it means to be. Clearly it's trying to capture some youthful energy that I'm not sure even exists. Sure thing, Ed Growlin' bro. <laughs> That's a good one. Do you think things will ever go back to normal? Would you want to go back to normal? Not if I still have to pay my student loans. And this is, this is tricky joke math, right? Because student loan debt is relatable, but quips about student loan debt don't ring true for some reason. My fix, if you would ask me what I would do, the trailer could work exactly the same, exact same ending. Everybody's getting Slurpees from this wrecked convenience store and nobody talks. They just walk out silently. No jokes, no quips. You don't need those. The Lord of the Rings Gollum. Modern, selfish, greedy, paranoid, sickly. I think you might resonate. Digimon survive. Modern. These teens, despite having Digimon, are still sad. And clearly that whole bit was just to have some fun. I realize my own perspective. I am an elder millennial. I am not hip. My finger is far from the pulse. One thing before, I do want to say that I don't necessarily think that a, a video game character has to not care about something to be relatable. Spider-Man picks up every side quest he can, and I love him for that. For Spider-Man, it's about his powers. He has these powers, so he has these responsibilities, so he has to pick up these side quests. And then obviously what I'm actually talking about is Horizon Forbidden West. For someone like Aloy, it kind of feels like you're just picking up side quests simply because you're a, a very good person. Like you, you, you're a human. You have the same physical abilities as anyone else in this world. It kind of seems like your superpower is simply your ability to care about hundreds of other people's problems at the same time. And remember all of their names. If anything, that's the thing that's hardest for me to relate to. She just walks up and was like, hey, Pickpack. It's like, how are you remembering? There's a hundred people. They're all missing some sort of relative somewhere in some tree. How are you, how are you remembering Pickpack of all people? Hi, Pickpack. It's your sister, right? How, Aloy? How does she do it? Anyway, that's the episode for this week. I'll be back next week with more delayed input. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. I don't know if you perceive this. I feel like I'm stringing you along. I feel like I owe you an Elden Ring episode. And I, it's weird. I feel like I owe me an Elden Ring episode. I'm loving Elden Ring right now. I do believe it's one of the greatest games I've played in a long time. I'm having dreams about Elden Ring, frequently. Like, like how you would have Tetris dreams, right? Where it's like, it's like the, the functions of Elden Ring appearing in my dreams, the, the, the processes applied to dreamlike environments. It's so weird. And yet, I haven't made an Elden Ring episode yet. So I wanted to make it clear to you the three reasons why I have not yet made an Elden Ring episode. Number one, I haven't finished it yet. I think, I think I'm like a third through this game. Obviously, it's hard to tell. They give you no indication. Right now, 40 hours in, level 77. That, to me, would indicate normally I'm at the end of the game. Level, level 77 
In any video game means you're knocking on the final boss's door. Here in Elden Ring? No, that means nothing. You'll still get one shot. Number two is the YouTube algorithm. My friend Pinch, who's super into this kind of thing, says that if you have Elden Ring in the title of your video on YouTube, you have basically no shot of getting any traction anymore. It's, it's basically run its course. YouTube has moved on. And so it was honestly, it was his idea to do this whole weird episode about like character modernity. Nailed it that time. And then number three, I do struggle. I have a hard time praising a thing that's already being praised. It, it, it's, it's not hollow, but it feels hollow. Elden Ring is deserved of praise. And yet, I don't know, to, to, a lot of times I'm like asking myself, is this video unique enough to add to YouTube.com? Am I, am I adding enough to the conversation to, to pipe up? Or is this just more meat on the meat pile? And so I think that there won't be an Elden Ring episode until it's veggies on the meat pile. If you catch my drift. <laughs>